Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, board certified dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about an off topic, which is basically my view on fragrance. The reason why I'm actually doing this, even though I'm a procedural dermatologist, is I just finished a podcast and they've asked me my opinion on um, fragrance. Now, uh, I'm neither pro fragrance nor am I against it. The only thing I'm against is if you have a fragrance allergy or if you have I guess skin conditions which may predispose you, once again, it's a risk benefit ratio, predispose you to getting a fragrance allergy. So just to put things in context, fragrance, the allergic rate in the population, in the normal population, so we will look at the randomized population, not a population which goes to a patch test clinic, um, which is where dermatologists work to figure out whether you have any allergies. Um, so the general population, it's only 1%, right? To put, to put things into context, when we look at um, the population who is, uh, I guess, allergic to things like nickel, which is one of the most common uh, contact allergens, that's actually 10 times higher, it's about 10%. So we don't go on about, um, I guess, avoiding, um, you know, avoiding nickel, avoiding um, buttons, avoiding metal. Um, but we, I think there's a lot of chat out there um, in the cosmetic world and in blogs and in YouTube uh, in regards to fragrance. So this is my two cents worth um, and hopefully this is a balanced opinion, yeah? Because coming from a dermatologist, we are well versed in the, um, I guess, role of fragrance. And when we do patch test clinics during our dermatology training, where I think all dermatologists, we all have to do patch test uh, training, yeah? In other words, we have to go to an um, run clinics where we find out what patients may be potentially allergic to. And how we do that is with patch testing, either to your personal products or what we call the European Standard Battery. So um, when you work as a dermatologist, you get a skewed, I guess, um, uh, opinion on certain things because we see patients time in, time out with certain allergies. And fragrance allergy, it always comes, well, it was, it, when you work in general dermatology, it comes up at least two, three times a day um, in, in your general work, yeah? Reason being is that um, patients, when they see dermatologists, generally speaking, they see them uh, as in general medical dermatologists, not cosmetic dermatologists, what dermatologists when you actually have skin problems. So when you see a dermatologist for, for example, a rash, whether it be eczema or dermatitis um, or a rash of unknown cause, whether it be a facial rash, generally speaking, um, there's inflammation, yeah? And the inflammation, if you have broken skin, if you have compromised skin, um, we have to think of all these different things, including uh, allergic contact dermatitis, not just irritant contact dermatitis. Irritant and allergic is very different because with an irritant dermatitis, just to give you an example. Um, okay, for example, a retinol or retinoid, right? Allergies are rare, irritant reactions are common, which means if you're gonna use a strong concentration whether it be a prescription retinoid or whether it be an over-the-counter retinol, if you're gonna use that often, uh, in other words, if you're gonna apply it, let's say, just for example, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times a day, sooner or later, you will get what's known as contact dermatitis, and the contact dermatitis is usually irritant. So irritant is a, a good amount uh, applied frequently, everyone gets it. Everyone has a different threshold. So. Most chemicals, including water, believe it or not, has an irritant potential. Allergic contact dermatitis is totally different. Allergic con contact dermatitis means your T cells, in other words, your immune system is revved up, so you, all you need is usually a drop, sometimes even you know aerosolized, where it's in the air, and if your T cells and your immune system are revved up, you don't need a large amount. You only need a small amount. And next thing you know, your dermatitis goes um, haywire. And there's not just dermatitis on um, the sites. It can be, for example, like if you're using a cream, fragrance, for example, if you're, not, if you're putting fragrance here, um, as in perfumes, it can also go into the air, it becomes aerosolized. Um, and when you touch it, you touch your eyelids. Uh, it can also go in areas which are exposed, but not areas of which you apply it. And then if for really bad allergies, you can get sensitization, and then your uh, immune system kicks up, and then you can get an id reaction, and, and you can have a massive reaction on your body, for example. So back to fragrance. As dermatologists, most of us say don't use fragrance. The reason being is that we, once again, we are uh, in a skewed world where we see patients with compromised skin, with bad skin, with multiple allergies. 
and I thoroughly agree. If you do have, um, for example, multiple allergies, if you have eczema, for example, uh, if you have a compromised skin barrier, for example, rosacea or, or even your atopic dermatitis, best to avoid fragrance because when you use fragrance in compromised skin, you increase the sensitization rate. In other words, your, your skin, instead of having a barrier out there um, to block your potential allergens and antigens coming in, you have a compromised barrier, which means the world out there can go into your skin and then uh, that presents to what's known as antigen presenting cells. That goes to your um, immune system, your lymph nodes, and then they produce uh, T helper cells and next thing you know, uh, dermatitis erupts. So uh, as a blanket cover, patients with sensitive skin, patients with previous allergens, patients with atopic dermatitis, Fragrance is probably not advisable, yeah? Uh, because even if you don't have an allergy, it probably predisposes you to an allergy. Now for everyone else out there, which is a lot, yeah? So when we're looking at the probability, the majority of patients do not need to avoid fragrance. They don't, yeah? If you do have an allergy to it, it's purely by chance, yeah? And, and it's not your actual, it's not that it's bad, because if it's, you know, if we're looking at something to blame, Let's look at, um, for example, nickel or, or um, you know, basically everyone will be wearing uh, buttons which are made out of plastic and zippers which are made out of acrylic. It just does not, it's not practical. And the flip side is that fragrance, it, it smells nice. That's the reason why it's fragrant, yeah? And that can actually um, enhance your senses and they can go, wow, you know, it's a feel good thing. So. Look, I'm not, I'm not against it. My, my principle for being against it is, like I said, only in sensitized skin. So what do dermatologists do when, when uh, we suspect a fragrance allergy? Well, we patch test patients, and patch test basically is an allergic test. Now, from what I remember, um, fragrance was, uh, I think 2007, they even term it <laughs> allergen of the year. So 2007, uh, with the American Contact Dermatitis um, Society, um, ACDS, they've actually given it a gold medal, they've given it a trophy and they go, wow, you're Allergen of the Year 2007, congratulations fragrance. Can you believe it? Um, this is the life of dermatologists. We, it's pretty interesting life, eh? it's pretty boring life and when we actually have to give an Allergen an award and name it, whoa, you're the Allergic Allergen of the Year 2007, congratulations fragrance. Now. Um, as dermatologists, we use patch testing. Patch testing basically is part of the what's known as European Standard Battery. Uh, that consists of allergens. We stick it in your back. We uh, give it uh, two days. We read it, and then we read it again in another one or two days to make sure that um, you're not allergic. The other thing is that we often test your products. So, uh, general dermatologists, medical dermatologists will often ask you if you do have an allergy, is to bring in your products. Um, they might use that in a little battery um, and stick it on your back to make sure that you're not allergic to certain constituents. Now, if you look at, I guess, formulations of any skincare, right? So whether it be LRP, La Roche-Posay, whether it be Inky List or Murad or what have you, there are so many chemicals. Um, so this video is not designed to teach you to read every single chemical, but to actually have an overview on the fragrance and what we test for. So it's a difference between fragrance and unscented. Fragrance means there's no added fragrances. Unscented means there may be fragrances to actually hide the smell um, of the product. So it doesn't mean that if you smell it, you can't smell, it doesn't smell uh, good, or you can't smell, you, you might have a stuff, <laughs> stuffed nose, yeah? Um, but if you can't smell it, it doesn't mean it doesn't have fragrance. It can be unscented because you can have different fragrances that actually hide the scent within the skincare product. Yeah, so that's very important. So yes, I guess if you can read it, it's, it's actually important, especially if you have predisposing um, factors as discussed earlier. So dermatologists, we use um, patch testing and patch testing consists of, I think it's 8% uh, fragrance mix. Uh, and I think in that 8% fragrance mix, there's eight different um, antigens or allergens that we look, uh, look for. Uh, things like uh, cinemates, whether it be, um, uh, I think, alpha uh, cinematic acid, and then you've got alcohol um, cinematic acid, uh, and then you've got eugenol, your iso eugenol, your, um, I think you've got some also oak extract from what I remember. 
Um, and then your citronella, which is um, often used as an insecticide or with scented candles. So we, we look at eight potential allergens um, in this fragrance mix. And that covers about, I think from what I remember, 75% of um, fragrance allergies, not, not every single one. So what happens if you got um, the ones that are missing? Well, that, that, <laughs> that's pretty hard, yeah. One of the things we do is we call what's known as a rote, repeat open application test. For, for example, we use your own product and we get you to apply that product um, uh, once a day or twice a day onto, a, um, onto your arm, right? So it might be in the forearm. And then you look for an, a, um, a, a reaction with that. So that's called a repeat open application test or rote testing. Uh, and that can pick up that product itself. It doesn't give you the constituents. So it could be, for example, your preservatives. It could be your sodium lauryl sulfate or sodium laureth sulfate. It can be um, you know, your propylene glycol. It can be your actives. It can be a whole heap of different things. But that gives you an idea um, that you may be allergic to, to your product. So if in doubt, patch test it yourself. Um, do a tiny, tiny patch uh, before, for example, uh, just, just as a guide, yeah? if, you, if you get a new um, cream, for example, if you've got a new lotion or, or um, active and you want to use it and you're a little bit cautious, what you do is you can apply it in your arm. You can do a pre-auricular patch test. So in other words, apply some over here uh, for consecutive nights and then you increase application to see whether um, it causes any problems. But once again, it's a fine line between an irritant dermatitis where you put too much of it, especially if it's, uh, just to give you an example, ascorbic acid, yeah, pH is, is low and if you're gonna put enough of it on your skin, you're gonna get an irritant reaction. You're not, you're not allergic to it, but it may cause irritation. So fragrance wise, guys, um, that's my opinion. Uh, it's, <laughs> I think it's important if you have predisposition, but you know, if you don't have any other risk factors, look, knock yourself out, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think you have to exert some kind of, I guess, um, uh, being sensible. So it's, it, the problem is that if you do develop a fragrance allergy and um, because of number one, you're predisposing factors and number two, you're using too many, too many stuff, which, most, which implies that you, you're oversaturating your allergen potential. Um, or number three, you're just pure, luck, pure unlucky, yeah. Um, you're in big trouble because fragrance is ubiquitous. So everything from <laughs> perfumes, um, hair care, cosmetics, uh, even scented toilet paper. So just imagine getting a fragrance allergy, not, not a good idea. So the consequences can be dire in regards to that. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to be practical. Uh, like I said, I'm not against it. Guys, I hope you liked that video. Um, it's, it's controversial. I know a lot of people out there will be I guess scaremongering and also saying, you know, how could a dermatologist say a um, fragrance is not bad? Um, but there you have it, guys. That's my opinion. Um, and I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm trying to give you my opinion based upon logic. So it's not that, hey, Davin Lim loves fragrance. Um, it's Davin's given his opinion in regards to the risk benefit ratio of fragrance exposure in the cosmetic world. Guys, I hope you like that video. One video every, um, every week. Please comment, like, share, and if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing more on my Instagram, uh, Dr. Davin Lim, or uh, if you want to go in a little bit more detail, a little bit more science, 101.skin. Uh, catch you guys later. Bye for now.